Everyone loves talking about The Flash when it comes to iconic comic book speedsters, but I think we should hold off on Barry Allen until, well, you know, the guys at DC get a replacement for Ezra Miller. I don't think he understood the point of Make your own future. Personally, I love an underdog, and that's exactly why I'm going to be talking about Quicksilver today. The dude's so fast that they literally had to get two actors to play him. Whip. Flash. And they even happen to be best friends. <gasps> what in the flashpoint is this? Of course, this isn't to undermine his popularity, but come on. I think we can all agree that the grey-haired speedster needs more love. And that's exactly what we're going to do now in this video, because I'm presenting to you my top 10 Quicksilver flexes in the movies. Pay attention now, or you might just miss the show. Leave it to Quicksilver to make light work of an Egyptian god. Moon Knight, uh, I mean Apocalypse, doesn't like it when Professor X plays hide and seek with him, so he shouts out, And as you'd expect, Quicksilver wasn't going to let such an opportunity blow past him. A man gives the overpowered villain the kind of smackdown even a WWE wrestler wouldn't have been able to pull off. It's all about the comedy though, because come on, you're watching a ridiculously dressed bald guy getting swatted around like a fly. If you don't find that funny, then you're probably like Wednesday from the Addams Family. I act as if I don't care if people dislike me, deep down. I secretly enjoy it. Please keep in mind that I'm only considering the first half of the fight because the second half would definitely make this whole video redundant. If I could save time in a bottle is to save every day till eternity passes away. You didn't see that coming? Voila! Here's Peter Maximoff's secret twin brother from Russia, Pietro. Just kidding, it's just the MCU being lazy with their 21st century Fox properties. It was a little confusing to see this version of the tricky quickie in Avengers Age of Ultron, but he quickly won us over the very first time he came into action. Quicksilver knocks down Hawkeye in a jiffy and rubs some salt in his wounds by saying, You didn't see that coming? I mean, to be fair, it's not like he was taking on an unbeatable champion, was it? Out of all the people in the Avengers, he decides to go for the weakest dude in the team. Yeah, Black Widow is much more valuable than Hawkeye, and I'm not just saying that because of Scarlett Johansson's, um, qualities. I want one. Anyway, this is a line that kind of becomes a running gag between the two of them, but I'm picking this scene because it has the highest impact. I wonder if The Weeknd modified Pietro's iconic line for his own song. You didn't see that coming. What's wrong with you? Is that gonna happen to all of us? Man, Peter Maximoff can be so unintentionally funny. I just love it. After falling through a trap door, the beast transforms into his true form, so it spooks out Mr. Quickie. Now, even I'd be scared if I saw a blue-haired monster in front of me, but I don't think I'd say, What's wrong with you? That's a bit rough, isn't it, don't you think? Maybe Evan Peters was still challenging his American horror story energy. I also love how he quickly changed his attitude from savage to scared when he asks, Is that gonna happen to all of us? The dude really went ahead and called his teammates power an infection. This isn't a zombie apocalypse, Quicksilver. It's X-Men apocalypse. Also, if you want to learn how to roast the beast, Who's the furball? Just ask Wolverine. He sure knows how to do it. Look who's talking. I mean, I still live in my mom's basement, but, you know, everything else is, uh... Well, it's pretty much the same. <laughs> I'm a total loser. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, coming to you. Keep up, old man. Nobody would know. Nobody. Pietro strikes again, and this time his victim is. Hawkeye, again. The final fight in Age of Ultron was definitely an upgrade from the OG Avengers Battle of New York. There's a lot of reasons for that, but I'm focusing on Quicksilver here as he rushes to take Little Sis Wonder away from the robo-villains and shames Clint once more by saying, Keep up, old man. I can totally understand why Hawkeye was thinking of ending things once and for all, because that is a straight up violation. The sass doesn't end there, because the brother and sister have a bit of an argument due to Quicksilver not knowing that his sister would go on to become the MCU's most powerful sorceress. Anyway, good old Pietro has to remind Wanda that he's the older brother, even though the gap is only about, what, 12 minutes? You know, I'm 12 minutes older than you. <laughs> go. But come on, does that really mean you get to enjoy big bro privileges? That doesn't seem to be fair. That's 
enough, boys and girls. That's enough. I basically did everything. And Gene did a little, like, towards the end. But it was mostly all me. If you use your phoenix powers to save an entire team of mutants from a solar flare, I think you should be entitled to bragging about it a little bit. But Quicksilver was never going to let Jean Grey take the credit for her sacrifice now, was he? He decides to straight up lie about his contribution to the mission in front of the cheering mutants, and I couldn't get over the part where he said, and Jean did a little, like, towards the end. Now, I'll accept the fact that Mr. Quickie did actually save everyone in the continuum of space, but damn, bro, chill. You're flexing harder than a wannabe TikTok rapper. Although I can understand why the dude wanted all the limelight here. He's never really gotten the appreciation he deserves, has he? Men need love too, you know. You wouldn't want him to turn into some kind of uh, cannibalistic serial killer, would you now? Oh, crap, it's too late for that. Pietro. Who's a popsicle? <laughs> Don't worry, Dharma won't hurt. Just like, share, and subscribe, and it'll leave you alone. All right, now, back to the list. We're under attack! Clear the city, now! Get off your asses. People keep telling us that violence isn't the answer, but in this case, it clearly is. The fake city of Sokovia is about to meet its doom, so Quicksilver warns all the locals in a bank to evacuate the area ASAP. Now that's how you behave like a good Samaritan, right? The only thing is, these guys are so lazy and unresponsive that even Snorlax would probably move faster than them. Yeah, sure, they don't know what's going to happen to them, but when a dashing young man in blue spandex tells you something, you better believe him. Anyway, Pietro's had enough of playing the nice guy, so he channels his inner mafia instincts and makes everyone know he means business. After all, the KGB will fit for no one. Also, I loved when he literally told everyone, get off your asses. I mean, you dimwits are gonna die. Show some sincerity, damn it. We need to leave now. Take nothing. Just go. The whole city is in danger. Get everyone out. But, uh, maybe I see you after? Shut it down. Nope. Not gonna happen. You don't know what you're doing. And you do? Creep. No, no. Go on. You're saying? You know, why even bother discussing the morality of creating an artificial robot with sentience when you've got a speedster who can shut down the process in a single second? Yet, yeah, sometimes all you need is common sense. Tony Stark gets into an argument with everyone over the creation of Vision, but Pietro's just like, ain't nobody got time for that. He unplugs the machine before we can even blink an eye, and then he savagely roasts Iron Man by saying, No, no. Go on. You're saying? Man, I don't know how I would have responded to that, but sheesh, bro, you just flexed on Robert Downey Jr. Although, if you were to look at things in the long run, Mr. Stark basically made a robot that slept with his sister. I don't know if it was worth the humor. Also, I know Hawkeye gets some redemption in this seed, but I ain't gonna mention it. Let that glorified Archer salt for a little bit. You didn't see that coming? Again. Relax, Peter. We're not cops. Of course you're not cops. If you were cops, you wouldn't be driving a rental car. Are you FBI? When I say the phrase legendary X-Men, I'm sure these three names come to mind. Wolverine, Professor X, and Magneto. You were thinking the same thing now, weren't you? So the very fact that Quicksilver managed to violate all of these icons within the first few minutes of meeting them was truly something remarkable. So you're not afraid to show your powers? Powers? What powers? What are you talking about? Is there something strange here? It starts off pretty innocently, with Peter saying he didn't do anything because he's been here all day. Yeah, right, like that's gonna convince anyone. However, when Logan tries to reassure him that they're not the cops, Quicksilver goes savage mode and doesn't spare any of the legendary trio members by first calling them old. When I know me, what's his old? Young. Young? You're just old. And then said, Of course you're not cops. If you were cops, you wouldn't be driving a rental car. Ouch, that's gotta sting. Metro Boomin should have featured Peter on Heroes and Villains as well. How do I know I can trust you? Sure, man. Cool. It was disgusting. What are you doing? I'm holding your neck so you don't get whiplash. What? Whiplash. If there was ever a moment for a father to be proud of his son, it's gotta be this scene. Quicksilver prepares to break Magneto out of prison, but Daddy says, In three seconds, those doors are going to open, and 20 guards will be here to shoot us. However, Sonny Boy replies by saying, I know. 
that's what I'm waiting for. I particularly like how he had to repeat the word whiplash into Magneto's ears just before he takes off like a SpaceX rocket. You take karate? You know karate, man? Also, the kitchen seat might technically be a power demonstration, but it's also a little sassy because Mr. Quickie's snacking on some noodles while also bullying the gods. I mean, it's a good thing to have fun, so I'm not complaining. I just hope Magneto's happy with his spawn. <laughs> This one kind of serves all purposes. It shows off Peter's super speed, sass, and sense of responsibility. Normally, when an entire mansion filled with innocent kids and a cute little doggo is about to explode, you wouldn't think of laughing. But here comes Evan Peters with his goofy charm and hilarious timing that totally makes this scene so memorable. The choice of song is weirdly appropriate for the situation, and you can't help but laugh at some of the faces the X-Men are making when Peter saves them. He rescues kids, adults, goldfish, and even sets a kid's hair in a not-so-straight way, pun not intended. Ended there, all in the middle of a nuclear level blast. You still think this scene doesn't deserve the top spot? Well, he pulls out that Michael Jackson moonwalk for good measure too. I could go on about this scene, but to sum it up in one word, it's perfection. Ah! Wow, oh, where, where did you? I was looking for the professor, I thought he lived here. And that's my list. Did Quicksilver reign supreme? Let me know in the comments because I'm always ready for an encore. I'm sure even Evan Peters wouldn't mind a volume two either. It's not like Disney's using him properly anyway, is it? Like, share and subscribe to show some love and check out the description for some exclusive links. All right then, I'll see you next time on the TV region.